Hello and welcome to the VEASAN Everything Guide to Sports Betting. I'm your host, Josh Applebaum. Bankroll management is arguably the most important discipline needed to be a profitable long-term sports better. If you bet too much on a game, you could quickly go bankrupt if you lose. But if you don't bet enough on a game, you won't see any profit when you win. In this episode, we'll help better set up a smart bankroll management plan so that they can not only survive the ups and downs of sports betting, but also generate a positive, sustainable, and long-term return on investment, also known as ROI. We'll also answer key questions such as, how much money should a better bet on each game? What is flat betting and why is it a smart strategy? How many games should you bet per day? What is the difference between betting to risk and betting to win? Should you buy picks from handicappers? And is it smart to avoid parlays? Believe it or not, bankroll management can be just as important as picking winners. The goal is to map out a disciplined, consistent strategy that allows you to maximize your profits and minimize your losses providing long-term sustainability. Think of bankroll management as the way to invest in sports, not just bet on them. Before placing a single wager, bettors must ask themselves a tough but fundamental question. How much can I afford to lose? Everyone's answer is different. For some people, this might be $100. For others, it might be $1,000, $10,000, or $100,000 or more. Regardless of your income level, you first have to decide on a number you are comfortable with. Consider it your disposable income. Ask yourself this, if you lost it all, would it drastically change your life? Would it negatively impact you financially to the point of missing car, rent, or mortgage payments? Would it bankrupt your life savings? Would it force you to take out a loan, or cancel a vacation, or cut back on groceries? If the answer to any of these questions is yes, then that number is too high. When you first enter sports betting, you need to be clear-eyed. This means hoping for the best, but expecting the worst. Only bet what you can afford to lose. You never want to put yourself in a situation where you go broke and have to take out a loan because you've dug yourself a massive hole betting on sports. Whatever number you end up deciding on, this is called your bankroll. It is the total amount of money that you have set aside specifically for betting on sports. One of the most pivotal factors of bankroll management is making sure you are properly funded at the beginning. The more money you start off with, the stronger position you put yourself in when it comes to turning a profit over the long haul. There's no way around it. When you first start betting on sports, you'll make mistakes. You'll likely lose much more often than you win. If your starting bankroll is too small, you won't be able to weather the initial storm and survive the beginner's learning curve. The first step is setting a hard number for your starting bankroll. This will allow you to map map out your bankroll management strategy much more easily. It also gives you a good benchmark to track your performance and chart your progress, providing a daily report card on how well you're doing as a better. A good starting bankroll is $1,000. If you can start with $2,000, $5,000, $10,000, that's even better. But $1,000 is a good starting point. The key is beginning with an even round number that is large enough to keep you afloat through the rough early days when you're learning how to bet. More importantly, You want to make sure that you are approaching sports betting with a clear mind and a level head. If you start with a low number, say $100 or less, and you are constantly worried about losing money and you're stressed out about losses, you will lose focus on the task at hand, becoming distracted and more prone to making mistakes and bad bets. Your judgment will be clouded and your decision making won't be sound. You will enter bets with a defeated mentality of trying not to lose money instead of actually trying to win money. Once you've decided on your starting bankroll, the next step is outlining your bankroll management strategy. This means determining how much you should bet on each game. The most common mistake a new better can make is being careless or reckless with his or her bankroll. This means betting different amounts on different games based on how confident you are in a team or a bet. Typically, if a new better loves a game, he or she will bet a large amount on it. If he or she likes a game but isn't as confident, he'll bet less. In betting circles, if you like a game but aren't completely sold on it, that is considered a lean. New bettors also bet based on emotion and recent performance, which is a slippery slope and a fast track to failure. When a new better is doing well and riding a hot streak, he feels invincible like everything he touches turns to gold and is bound to win. 
As a result of this overconfidence, he will start to get greedy and risk more and more with each bet, thinking he's bound to win every time. On the flip side, if a new better is mired in a cold stretch and feels like he can't catch a break, also known as being snake bit, he will start to risk more and more each game with the hopes of winning it all back in one fell swoop. This is referred to as chasing and should be avoided at all costs. It's the quickest way to go bankrupt. When new bettors are losing, they can also get scared and change their approach. This means betting far less on games or laying off entirely because they're afraid of losing more. This can also be problematic as it causes bettors to forfeit value by foregoing a smart bet that could have won or winning far less on a bet strictly out of fear of losing more. A common mantra for all bettors, specifically wise guys, is this. Scared money don't make no money. In both scenarios outlined above, bettors should resist these perceived shortcuts and easy ways out. These strategies, or lack thereof, are dangerous, unsustainable, and can quickly lead to losing it all. Instead, bettors should adhere to a consistent, disciplined bankroll management approach. This allows bettors to maximize their winning streaks, but also weather the inevitable cold stretches. Betting on sports is a roller coaster. There's no way around it. It can be very volatile and unpredictable with massive ups and downs and short periods of time. This is referred to as variance. We all want to get rich quick, but that just isn't realistic. The ultimate goal is to steadily build your bankroll over time, not become a millionaire overnight. Remember, sports betting is a marathon, not a sprint. The best and easiest way to manage your bankroll is by embracing flat betting. Flat betting is a consistent discipline strategy that means you are betting the same amount on every game regardless of your confidence level. Flat betting isn't sexy or flashy, but it puts you in the best position to stay in the game long term. In order to determine how much to bet on a game, take your starting bankroll amount and divide it into equal parts, or units. Once you decide this number, it becomes your unit size. This is the amount of money you are betting on each game. A good flat betting approach and a good recommendation is risking between 1% to 5% of your bankroll per bet. Many professional bettors only risk 1% or 2% of their bankroll per bet. This may seem low, but you have to remember that most professional bettors are starting off with a massive bankroll, maybe $100,000, $500,000, or maybe a million or more. This means 1% would be $1,000 per game, $5,000 per game, $10,000 per game or more. If you want to be a little bolder and take more risks, you can increase your unit size to 4% or 5% of, of your bankroll per bet. However, do not go above 5%. Consider it a line in the sand that you should not cross. Anything above 5% means you are assuming bigger risk that could lead to massive fluctuations in your bankroll. One bad losing streak could clean you out if you are risking more than 5% per play. A good medium that a lot of bettors should embrace is 3% of your bankroll per bet. To find out what this means for you, just take your starting bankroll and multiply it by 0.03. For example, if your starting bankroll is $1,000, this means you are betting $30 per game. If you are starting with $100, this means you are betting $3 per game. This now becomes your unit size moving forward, meaning one unit equals $30 per game or $3 per game, respectively. To illustrate why flat betting is so important, let's say your starting bankroll is $1,000. You decide to bet 5 games at $200 per game. This means your unit size is $200, which amounts to 20% of your bankroll. If you end up winning all 5 games, that would be fantastic. Unfortunately, it just isn't realistic, especially when you're a new better. When you're a new better, everyone is excited when they first start betting, and no one wants to be a buzzkill, but you have to be prepared for the worst case scenario. You could very easily lose all five bets, and then you're bankrupt and have no more money to bet with. Just like that, you went from super excited to now totally depressed. You're out of the game before it even started. Now let's say you drop the unit size to $100 per game, which translates to 10% of your bankroll per bet. If you lose all five bets, which means you went 0-5 at $100 per bet, you just cut your bankroll in half from $1,000 to $500. This is an improvement over betting $200 per game, or 20%, and losing it all, but you are still assuming far too much risk at 10%. Now let's consider betting $50 a game, which translates to 5% of your bankroll per bet. Going 0-5 would drop your bankroll down to $750. Betting 3% per play, which would be $30 per game, would drop your bankroll to $850. Betting 1%, 
or $10 a game would drop it to $950 if you lost all five games. By staying at or below the 5% threshold, you limit your losses substantially and keep yourself in the game much longer. This will provide you a longer runway to learn from your mistakes, get more accustomed to betting, and overcome the beginner's le learning curve. In addition to saving you from going broke when you have a bad night or a sustained cold streak, flat betting also allows you to eliminate damaging bias that could hold you back and cut into your potential profits. For example, let's say the one hundred, let's say the one thousand dollar bankroll better only makes two bets, one of the games he really loves and the other he is less confident in, which amounts to more of a lean. As a result, he bets 10% on the game he loves, betting $100, and only 5% on the game he is leaning on, betting $50. If he wins the game he leans on, but loses the game he loves, the better loses $50 overall. However, if he had adhered to flat betting and risked the same $50 on both plays, he would have broken even instead of having a losing night. Once you've established your unit size and percentage, stick with it. Don't change day to day or week to week or even month to month based on your performance. Remember, flat betting is all about grinding long term and investing, knowing that there will be ups and downs along the way. You would hate to have a good week, adjust your bankroll upward, then get mired in a losing skid and lose it all quickly because you are betting more on each game and adjusted your bankroll too soon. Also, bankrolls can fluctuate based on the sports betting calendar. This means you are more susceptible to volatile swings when the calendar is busy with multiple sports in session all at once. This leads to an increased volume of bets in the fall, winter, and spring when football, basketball, and hockey are all in session, as opposed to the summer when really baseball is the only game in town and betting dies down. As a result, bettors should only adjust their bankrolls once per year. The best time to adjust your bankroll is in the late spring or early summer. By this time, football is long over and basketball and hockey are wrapping up their postseason. The summer is considered the sports bettors' vacation. It is a time when bettors are able to relax, recharge their batteries, and prepare for the upcoming football season. Remember, football is always king in betting. It's also the perfect time in the summer to study and adjust your bankroll. For example, let's say you start off with a bankroll of $1,000 at the beginning of the football season in September. You've done pretty well over the past nine months and turned that $1,000 into $1,500. When you started with $1,000 in September, your unit size was 3% per play, which equates to $30 per game. Now that you've increased your bankroll to $1,500, just multiply the new bankroll number of $1,500 by .03. This comes out to $45. This means your new adjusted unit size moving forward is $45 per game no longer 30 per game. On the other hand, let's say you started with $1,000 in the fall and you suffered some bad beats and tough breaks and you are now down to just $500. Instead of continuing to bet $30 per game, a good idea would be to adjust your unit size down to $15 per game. That would be by multiplying the $500 by 0.03. Flat betting isn't the only bankroll management strategy option. Another option is Kelly Criterion created by J. L. Kelly Jr. in 1956. Kelly Criterion is a famous mathematical formula used to determine how much to bet on or invest in in order to maximize your amount of profit. This is the opposite of flat betting. Instead of risking the same amount on every bet, you are weighing your bets based on your confidence level. This system is used by some professional bettors and can be highly profitable. However, it can also be very dangerous because it is very complex and hard to calculate. If you are a math whiz who attended MIT or Harvard, like Goodwill Hunting, and you know your way around Excel sheets and pivot tables, Kelly Criterion might be for you. But for the vast, vast majority of bettors, flat betting is the simplest and best way to go to keep you in the game long term, while also maximizing your profits and minimizing your losses. One critically important aspect of bankroll management that largely gets overlooked or ignored is the option of whether to bet to risk or bet to win. They might sound similar, but knowing the distinction is crucial. Betting to risk means you are betting a specific amount of your choice regardless of the odds. If you lose the bet, you lose whatever amount you risked on the game. If you win the bet, your payout is determined by the price of the odds. Betting to win is completely different. It means you have to risk a predetermined amount based on the odds in order to win your desired amount. 
Betting to win oftentimes means having to risk more, especially when it comes to betting on favorites and money lines. Betting to risk and betting to win can be very confusing, especially for new bettors. So let's offer a real world example to illustrate the difference. Let's say the Los Angeles Dodgers are a minus 150 favorite on the money line in a Major League Baseball game. You want to bet $100 on the Dodgers. If you bet to risk, this means you are risking $100. Based on the minus 150 favorite price, this means if the Dodgers win the game, you would win roughly $67. Plus, you would get the $100 that you risked back. If the Dodgers lose the game, you lose the $100 that you risked. On the flip side, if you bet to win $100 on the Dodgers, this means you would need to risk $150 up front based on the minus 150 money line price. If the Dodgers win the game, you win $100 plus you get the $150 that you risked up front back. However, if the Dodgers lose, you lose the entire $150 that you had to risk. By betting to risk, you have far more control over your bet. You decide how much you want to risk, instead of letting the price of the odds dictate the amount. Betting to risk is also a smarter play when it comes to spread or total bets. For example, let's say the Denver Broncos are minus 7 favorites on the spread at minus 110 juice. The common way to phrase this bet would be, you have to lay $110 in order to win 100 if you want to bet the Broncos minus 7. That would be considered betting to win. You could also bet to risk 100 on the Broncos at the minus 110 juice, which means if they cover the spread, you would profit roughly $90.91 based on the minus 110 juice. Long story short, don't fall into the trap of thinking you always have to pay the additional 10 cents on top of what you want to bet. Instead, you can bet to risk, and the payout will be determined by the odds. You are risking less with your payout a little less. The dangers of betting to win become more amplified as you make more and more wagers. For example, let's say you want to bet on the Cubs, the Red Sox, and the Yankees in Major League Baseball. All three teams are minus 150 favorites on the money line. If you bet to win $100 on each, this means you would need to risk $150 on each bet, which totals $450 combined. If all three lose, you lose the full $450 you had to risk. However, if you bet to risk $100 on all three teams and all three teams lose, you only lose the $300 that you had to risk. By betting to risk instead of betting to win, you saved yourself $150 in losses. Does betting to risk and betting to win change if you bet on underdogs instead of favorites? The short answer is yes. Let's flip the money, let's flip the money line prices and say the Cubs are a plus 150 underdog. If you bet to risk $100 on the Cubs and they win the game, you win $150 based on the plus money underdog price. Plus you get the $100 that you risked back. If you bet to win $100 on the Cubs, you would only have to risk $66.67 based on the plus 150 underdog price. If the Cubs win the game, you win $100 plus you get the $66.67 that you risked back. If the Cubs lose the game, you lose the $67.67 that you risked. On the surface, it might seem as though betting to win is the smartest strategy when it comes to betting underdogs. After all, it allows you to risk far less up front. However, you must remember that betting to win on underdogs cuts into your potential profits and forfeits the advantages of plus money payouts. Say the Cubs, Red Sox, and Yankees are all plus 150 underdogs. You bet to win 100 on all three, which means you risk $66.67 on each one totaling roughly $200 overall. If all three win, you win $300, plus you get the $200 that you had to risk back. However, if you bet to risk 100 on all three and all three win, you win $450 based on each team's plus 150 price, plus you get the 300 that you risked back. By betting to risk instead of betting to win, you increase your underdog payout substantially. In this case, you would win $450 betting to risk on all three plus 150 underdogs versus only winning $300 by betting to win. Betting to risk earns bettors $150 more in profit. For these reasons, bettors should always bet to risk, never to win. Sure, there are pros and cons when it comes to betting on favorites and underdogs, but overall, the name of the game is about limiting your risk and maximizing your reward. 
Betting to risk affords bettors this opportunity. Betting to win does not. If you place a bet online or through a mobile app, which has been rising in popularity in recent years since sports betting has been legalized since the 2018 Supreme Court decision to overturn PASPA, you will see two boxes where you can enter how much you want to bet on a game. One box will say risk. Typically, it will be the first box on the left. And the other will say win, typically the second box on the right. Once you plug in your desired amount in the risk box, it will automatically generate the converted payout in the win box based on the price of the odds. On the flip side, if you are betting in person at a physical sportsbook or casino, you could just walk up to the cashier, also known as the window, and tell the ticket writer behind the counter if you want to bet to risk or bet to win, along with the amount you choose. If you don't say anything to the ticket writer and just hand them $100 or whatever you want to bet, they will automatically convert the $100 into a bet to risk proposition. The ticket, also known as the betting slip or betting receipt, would show three numbers. The ticket cost, the payout labeled to win, followed by a number that says to collect. For example, if you bet $100 on the 49ers as a minus three favorite at minus 110 odds, the ticket cost would be $100. The to win would be $90.91 and the to collect would be $190.91. If the 49ers cover the spread, you would just walk back to the ticket window after the game, give them your ticket, and they would hand you $190.91 back in cash.